Good Wednesday night. I am Tabo Mkhuli, and thank you for joining us tonight here on In Focus. Basic Education Minister Angel Utsecha has told Parliament that South African children have lost at least a year of progress reading skills since the COVID-19 pandemic. This, according to the Progress in International Reading Literacy Study Reading, Grade 4 learners. Now, she further revealed a raft of corrective policy strategies to ensure schooling that accommodates a vast range of learning capabilities. Joining us now to evaluate what uh, this would all mean as far as defeating the challenges facing basic education, uh, Afunda Wande, Chief Executive Officer, Nangam uh, So Mzatse, Teacher Learning Support Practitioner, Buntle, good enough as well coming through in this conversation as well as a teacher and education activist Hendrik Makenet and equal education researcher Elizabeth Barney. Good evening to you and thank you very much for your time and joining us uh, tonight up here on uh, In Focus to look at this. First and foremost, let's talk a, a little bit broadly about the budget vote presented. Um, do, do you support the budget vote, how it splits and how uh, things have been prioritized in this particular financial year. Hendrik, let's start with you. Good evening. Uh, uh, good evening, Tabo. Uh, in terms of uh, education, we will recall that uh, uh, education, in terms of uh, what uh, cabinet decides, gets uh, the biggest chunk. And of course, uh, this is necessary, more so given the high number of learners who are found in uh, rural areas, as well as in uh, some of the township uh, schools. And of course, uh, we have just emerged from the severity of COVID-19, uh, coupled with uh, the disaster that we saw in the province of uh, KwaZulu Natal. And I think that uh, more money will be required uh, to make sure that uh, you know schools that were also affected uh, in terms of the roads at the schools, particularly in case that then, uh, you know, something drastic must be done uh, to make sure that our learners are able to study in a conducive environment. But uh, at the same time, we want to support uh, the efforts by basic education minister to prioritize our learners, particularly those uh, from rural uh, communities. We think that her uh, move will certainly go a long way to ensure that our learners are able to create a better future for themselves. Now, Nagam, so there are those who are saying that the targets, particularly when it comes to uh, infrastructure development, are just not adequate enough. There's something a little bit more that needs to be done there. The money that's been allocated there, I suppose, speaks to, to the inadequacy of those targets as well. Sure. And, and, and I think also probably, Elizabeth, um, seeing that equal education do a lot of work and uh, advocacy around infrastructure of education, but uh, at least from our standpoint, uh, at least, you know, as, as an individual, looking at the budget note, it's like, yet again, plans, plans, plans only means rich policy. However, we are still lacking prioritization and implementation within our system. Just off of the back of desktop work done, uh, when that speech went out, we went and Googled how many times education was announced. Surprise, surprise, only seven times. And only twice that uh, in the seven times that education was mentioned um, that we saw figures sort of associated to it. With the free, free high education and just also by um, 24.6 billion uh, that was uh, additionally allocated for provinces to deal with teacher compensation. So in no way, at least um, from our analysis of this budget speech, we are seeing prioritization of targeted um, interventions that will yield into improved quality learning and better learning outcomes. So yet again, we've got announced policies. Uh, there's a difference from being announced and funded or funded and planned. So we still, I mean, like Hendrik is saying, Yes, we're still being allocated the chunk of, the, uh, of our GDP, but it's very difficult to disentangle um, whether are we getting uh, the buck for the money. You know, uh, so much money is being spent on, on education, so much human capa uh, capital is being deployed there, but in terms of the results, it's, 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 it's unclear, at least uh, in my view. So I think it's, it is about time that we, we start moving away from announced policies um, but also having them to be also budgeted for and planned 
and implemented and monitored uh, effectively. Yeah. Elizabeth, let's uh, uh, pin down a little bit onto these facts and numbers. So you've got the ACD program, uh, which uh, from the Deputy Minister of Basic Education seems to be doing well. They've replaced 302 uh, uh, schools that they needed to fix. Now they've got uh, 30 schools that still remain in this particular uh, program. Uh, when you talk of... Um, uh, the, 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 the the toilets that still needed to be uh, 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 sorted out. I think they're still saying 16 or so still remain in the ACD program. Of course, the SAFE program is a, it's a completely different story. First and foremost, my question was why the segmentation in, in as far as the programs? Why you have the ACD program and you have the SAFE program? Uh, but, but, but also, are things as far as the recovery of uh, those uh, schools and infrastructure Go, going as well as the, the, the department is indicating? Well, um, in terms of the delineation between a CD and SAFE, um, if we recall, SAFE came about as a result of um, an urgent need for the department to fast track um, sanitation infrastructure purely because we were having a crisis on our hands and learners were losing their lives as a result. So the SAFE um, initiative was initially supposed to make things go faster than um, you know it would ordinarily go. So a CD um, normally is not given as many projects or as many projects are not assigned under a CD as they were assigned to save. But with both projects, as um, from what we are seeing, and they are coming to a completion or a stop and end um, in the next year, financial year. What we are seeing is that the intention behind them have not been realized as um, fast as we um, it was initially announced. So even under the conservative projects or estimates that are given under a CD, we are seeing that it has been very slow in terms of progression. It, schools have waited years to actually get that. Those 300 completed projects did not happen overnight. It took much longer than anticipated. And we know that for SAFE in itself, um, about 1,500 odd projects are still in the pipeline that are supposedly being tried to be completed before the, um, the initiative comes to an end next year, which is not very realistic. So we still have a lot of schools in our communities, mainly poor, marginalized rural communities who are every day learners are facing very humiliating, um, inhumane ways of um, um, going to school. They are going to school with with teeth latrines in them, this poses a danger to their health and safety, as well as the enjoyment of basic education. So while both projects were very optimistic in terms of eradicating um, infrastructure backlogs in the sector, it has been very slow in delivering on its promises. All right. Let's talk then, uh, Bunche, a little bit about the support that has been given to teachers. The, the uh, minister saying in March this year, training manuals were developed in preparation for the training of subject advisors and teachers in occupational and vocational oriented uh, subject. There's the move towards the this school of skills and particular focus on vocational uh, as well as occupational uh, schools. How is this approach managed? Please unmute for us, Bunche, if you can, uh, so that we can hear you. Bunche, please unmute. Good afternoon, and thank you to you all. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go for it. Okay. All right. Um, what I can say that um, I, I, I do support the, the embankment of the education minister, Mam Enji Musera, to make an effort to implement a recovery plan for the schools <coughs> sorry, in South Africa. And um, due to that, I think everyone knows that the, the loss was in South Africa and also in other countries due to this uh, uh, pandemic that was happening. So now um, the, the most challenge was, uh, as you know, Lena stayed at home for such a long time without coming to school and some, some were confused as they, they forget information whereby they cannot read and some, you know, they lack practice at home. 
So with the plan, you know, I, I, I fully um, support uh, the plan for, for, for the basic education, especially in the foundation phase. Yeah. What, what does that plan look like? I mean, um, there are some who are saying the, the ATPs, that recovery teaching plan, um, is absurdly inadequate. In fact, we, would, we will not even be able to catch up the past two years at the rate that it is currently going. W what is your experience? Okay, um, what I can say with the experience that I have, I, I think and I believe that it's going to happen, then we can catch up, the department can catch up. It, it will depend on how are, are they going to uh, allocate also the assistance in the foundation phase because with my view, I'm thinking that maybe um, they need to, um, to, 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 to make sure that maybe they get some of the assistance in classes, in especially grade R and grade 1, because that's where the challenge is in the foundation phase. So maybe if they, 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 they do a, a parallel teaching in the class, that will be able to assist and to help also so that we can recover from what we, we went through. So I, I think that that plan is definitely going to, to help. All right, uh, Bunche. Henrik, there's been, of course, a, a hasty transfer following the president's um, announcement that the ECD function should fall within the Department of Basic Education and no longer from uh, the Department of Social Development. And uh, the minister announcing that this indeed has been done. That function has been uh, transferred. But is the transfer of the function to basic education followed by a, a cogent strategy to improve the quality uh, in ECDs? Uh, um, you know, Travo, I must be honest, uh, the transfer is quite a, a good move uh, in terms of what the department has done uh, to move uh, those uh, ECDs uh, from uh, social development, as you have said, into the basic education uh, sector. But of course, uh, you will recall that uh, there are still those, uh, some of those uh, teachers who come from uh, this uh, uh, foundation phase uh, in ECDs uh, who are now undergoing uh, training. Uh, I know that some of them have uh, registered, uh, there's a course that is offered by the University of South Africa uh, to make sure that they are integrated uh, very smoothly into the terrain of uh, education broadly. And, uh, I, I don't think that at this early stage we can say that we've seen any uh, concrete uh, development. But uh, I want to agree with uh, Bunke that, uh, you know, it is necessary for this country to zoom directly into the uh, foundation phase with a view to strengthen it. Uh, because you'll agree with me that uh, when you build a house, uh, the stronger your foundation, the stronger your house will be. So at the moment, uh, the, a lot of focus has been on... Uh, you know, grade 12 learners, you are correct. The ATPs, uh, learners have already lost uh, in terms of what transpired in the past two years. And, uh, you know, what they are currently uh, going through is not enough. Uh, there was a proposal at some point that uh, maybe uh, teaching time needs to be extended. But of course, uh, this was met with, a, a, you know, a negative uh, approach by especially unions, which were not happy. Uh, with the move. So currently things are still a bit slow in as far as uh, 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 what I know, but uh, at the same time there are still some schools which are now able to even attend on Saturday as well as uh, Sunday, some of them, which uh, where they are trying to ensure that uh, we recover from the lost ground uh, which uh, Buntle spoke about. And I think that if uh, all of us uh, remember education on its own is a triangle. It requires the involvement of not only uh, learners and teachers, uh, but also parents. But at the same time, we know that uh, this country still faces a number of challenges, uh, you know, the issues of poverty, unemployment, and as well as inequality, where some of the child-headed uh, families, learners are not able to, to cope on their own. Yeah. So we really need uh, a society that will stand up and, and get involved in the education of our children so that uh, they can be able to prosper yeah. in their lives. So, so, so Andrew, are, are you saying the characterization of the, of the challenge is, is correct, right? Studies measuring uh, reading proficiencies saying grade four learners are 1.25 years behind, especially those in poor households. Even the minister uh, 
are saying a grade four learner has got reading capability of a grade three learner, which of course backs those, those kind of studies. Are you saying this is just purely because of the COVID-19 setbacks or is there something else that needs to be happening as far as the quality of um, uh, the, 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 the foundation phase learning that is required in the country? Well, uh, Taro, it's not only the aftermath of uh, COVID-19. Uh, even before COVID, uh, research was done. Uh, Buntre spoke about the capacity of the learners, uh, you know, that some of them are unable to read for minutes. That is actually the biggest uh, challenge faced by the Department of the Education. And I think that uh, one of the experts, a uh, psychologist uh, called uh, Levi Vygotsky, characterized uh, this problem and you know to say that learners need to be in their zone of proximal uh, development so that they can learn better because uh, there is no point uh, trouble in teaching a learner uh, for instance uh, grade 10 mathematics when uh, such a learner is developmentally still in uh, grade 6 so learners need to advance and the only way in which they can uh, move forward is if the they are captured correctly from, from foundation phase to make sure that proper uh, teaching and learning is able, able to take place. And uh, these are some of the challenges that we are sitting with, not only the foundation phase learners, but generally even issues of uh, mathematics and science. You will recall Tabo at some point, uh, you know, the teams, uh, the trends in international uh, mathematics and science studies, uh, you know, when they did their survey, they, uh, in countries, more than 50 countries of the world, it was discovered that South Africa was the second last in that particular survey in, in as far as the performance of uh, mathematics and science is concerned. And so we are now advancing towards the fourth industrial uh, revolution where if we are not careful, our country will continue to be uh, behind uh, as other countries such as uh, Singapore are already ahead. And I think that we need to find a way to also learn from such uh, countries which are already leading, particularly in this, uh, uh, you know, key subjects, the gateway uh, uh, subjects as they call them. Uh, because Tabo, in close, in, in, just in, in, in making the, the input again, one of the key challenges is the fact that, uh, you know, we are producing graduates who are now sitting at home uh, without employment. Yeah. There's structural unemployment is a challenge. Not because uh, uh, some of the jobs do not exist, but some of the jobs that exist, uh, our graduates do not have the necessary skills okay. to be able to, to be absorbed at that level. All right. we'll, 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 we'll come a little bit to, to, to that in a moment, but I want to bring in Nangam so here uh, just to, to weigh in on that very thing. Uh, studies measuring mm -hmm. reading proficiency, so uh, reading with the meaning. Okay. Uh, grade four learners are, 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 are staying behind. Why, why is it that they, they lose this year or so uh, in terms of where they need to be? Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I jump into that one? Hence, Hendrik, and I said it, hence I've said it before, that uh, the problem is it, it, it is at grade R and grade 1, whereby there, there is a, a, a serious challenge uh, uh, in terms of um, the, the teachers' challenge. They didn't have much control in terms of uh, learners' reading, especially during that COVID time, whereby uh, children, they, they have to, to study at home. We have to give them some work to, to go in and study at home. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, the challenge, the biggest challenge is that um, the parents, when I'm talking about parents, I'm talking about the guidance as well. Unfortunately, some of them, you know, they, they, they also have a barrier of learning. They cannot even assist the learners at home. So it, it, it becomes a challenge to, to also to, to, to the department and to teachers because of they cannot move forward. That is, hence I'm saying to you that I think the best thing that, that's going to happen now or that, that the department is going to implement is that maybe they can get uh, maybe some assistance to each and every grade in the foundation phase because that's where the, 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 all the knowledge is starting. So once the foundation phase is very strong, then I can tell you also the grade four, moving forward, the intermediate phase and also the, the senior phase, and then they can excel okay. into their classes. All right. Uh, okay. Now, I'm sorry. You wanted to wait? 
Yeah, sure. So, uh, Tabo, I think I think um, on the ATP. So very. I mean, I've got. I will try to be succinct as, as much as possible. On the ATPs, um, we are literally writing up on on these trimmed curriculums. Um, at least from our analysis, the curriculum hasn't been has been trimmed. We looked at the 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 ATPs um, in 2020, just after COVID hit. Um, which was technically from a content perspective was trimmed, but there was backlash from the unions and then DBE came back again and subsequently has issued two versions of trimmed ATPs and it's exactly the same as pre-COVID. Um, it seems like at least from a curriculum perspective, um, there's no prioritization of the curriculum or no core curriculum has been implemented to sort of fast track this learning recovery. So at the moment, DB is talking about a learning recovery and uh, uh, people like ourselves who are working um, day to day with teachers and with learners and are looking at curriculum, um, we're not seeing this. Um, there's no, absolutely no evidence of um, actual uh, policies, training teachers, making sure everyone is on board and, and being implemented nationally. So that's the one point. On the 0.25 uh, standard deviation that you have mentioned, you must remember that South Africa has always, even post-1994, we were always following a bimodal education system. The richer get richer, the poor get poorer. So what does that mean uh, now, post-COVID, not post-COVID, we're still in COVID, what does that mean? That gap has just widened. Uh, it means yet again, the kids that are in quantum one to three schools have been further been disadvantaged because of the school rotational timetabling. So it is, I always often say it's like a double, it's like a double catch up. Um, in a sense, before COVID, we were trying to catch up the quantile one to three schools, the township and rural schools. Um, but now uh, with, with, further, with COVID, it has exacerbated that learning gap. Mm -hmm. um, and at least to my knowledge, or as far as I'm concerned, it seems to be no action in place that has been taken by uh, the DBE. It is only yet again, just policy announcements and no implementation and no monitoring of, of, of those policies um, um, at all. I mean, the fourth industrial revolution, I'm like, how are we gonna get uh, a four IR if kids can't even read yeah. for meaning, not even do a basic mathematical. So, so I, I, I feel very strongly um, around uh, the need to be able to focus on implementation and implementation plan and to hold people in, in the system and, 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 and within government accountable um, for all of these policies and so, and so you, you're saying the three streams curriculum model uh, coding robotics and maritime school of skills are those just things that are good on paper uh, are they are, are they not beginning to filter through I mean uh, of course they are looking at for for example grade eight and grade nine to saying in particular they should start be to those especially those who take cat as a subject uh, th these things should 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 start be filtering through. Tabo, um, all good on paper. This model has been, um, I mean, this conversation has been happening. So it's not new. It just has come to the ears of the public mo most recently. It's been an, it's an adoption of the German education system where kids from as early as grade four already go into the stream. Excellent. Excellent. I think, I mean, if you look at our sort of our economy, we probably need a diverse skill set from vocational, from agriculture and so on. Very important. But how do we enable that? What, what, are, what are the enabling conditions for the system to, to make sure that a, a, a curriculum like that actually does pull through? And this is where I kind of hit a roadblock. All good on paper, like you're saying, Tabo, but yet again, we're missing the how. So we know what, but the how is missing in our discourse in education. Elizabeth, do we have the same uh, playbook that we are reading when it comes to the recovery and how it should happen? Um, yes, so in terms of recovery, we, there's a lot of pressure being put on learners to be able to make up for something um, that isn't really a doing of theirs, right? So pedagogically, we have a we have, um, struggling education system where foundation is shaky, um, teachers are overwhelmed, their, their quality is not so good. And so learners from rural and disadvantaged communities were behind their affluent counterparts even before COVID happened. And with COVID, the, the, the inequality has been made a lot more glaring and the, the, the gap has been widened a lot more. And so these learners have been doubly disadvantaged in that 
where while they were one step behind, maybe with COVID, they're like maybe two or three steps behind. And now they're supposed to catch up all those, um, um, the, the gap and be able to compete on the same level as the affluent counterparts who were able to uh, maybe um, comfortably move to online learning, have extra support. They have um, caregivers and parentals who are educationally astute and were able to help them with um, their homework that was sent uh, virtually or by email or homeschooling. And um, it is grossly unfair to expect a rural, like, you know, a child, a black child from a rural community who has, who has all these barriers in front of them to be able to leap over all these barriers and be able to produce the kind of quality that is expected for them to be able to enter higher education and even possibly the labor market. So when we talk about catch up and um, how to recover from um, the losses or the, uh, the pandemic or the the crisis we are seeing in the education sector, it is not just enough to have a plan that says, oh, we are going to extend um, teaching time to Saturdays or Sundays. That is just going to add to the, uh, the stressors and the psycho, um, psychosocial um, distress that learners are already facing. There needs to be a lot more creative way of trying to see where the serious needs are and how to support and scaffold um, these vulnerable learners to be able to attain and grasp the major and the critical and substantive content without overburdening them and adding right. to their stress. Right. Let's leave it there because of time. Of course, we'll take it one bite size at the time. There's still a whole lot of other issues that we still need to unpack uh, as far as education is concerned. But let me thank you tonight for coming through just to touch the tip of the iceberg that talk about the recovery plan. There's still a whole lot more to particularly around the dropout rate uh, and uh, also issues around the curriculum uh, itself and what it looks at. But